Hey guys, my name's Anthony Rosbottom and today we're going to uh, go over me finishing a sketch I started last summer. The sketch is called Propeller Griffin. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. Let's um, see what the process is. Okay, here you can see I'm working on the, the forearm. The head's been done, the propeller's been done, uh, mouth and teeth, eyes, a bit of a body, a bit of the upper body, I mean, um, and that's about it. Yeah, that's a clearer picture there. Yeah, my main technique with ink is uh, stippling. Um, it's a technique I'm comfortable with. Like cross hatching is a bit too untidy for me. <laughs> I don't like the uh, the chaos of it so much, but I do need to uh, do more sort of loose loose work because the the stippling can appear quite sterile sometimes, uh, like sort of lacks movement and energy. You know, I am jealous of artists that can. Uh, do really loose and rough work, but it still has, um, it still puts the message across. Yeah, my main weapon of choice here is the uh, is a point one millimeter fine liner. And occasionally I'll swap to a 03 millimeter for uh, darker areas. Because it's been a few months since I started this sketch, um, and I've just come back to it recently. I forgot about the shape of the forearm here. So you see I'm sort of missing out on the this, this sort of flap of skin underneath. And I've just realised, oh yeah, I need, to, uh, I need to fill that in. I usually do, uh, most of the time when I'm out and about, I usually will carry a small sketch pad um, and either uh, a fine mechanical pencil and or uh, a couple of ink pens because I like to uh, be out and about and, you know, if I'm waiting for something, uh, you know, in a waiting room somewhere or even if I'm just having a coffee, I like to just crack open a sketchbook and it means I can get a lot more artwork done um, instead of you know uh, leaving it to the evenings after the day job yeah here we are moving on to the back back leg I sort of wanted to make the pause a light, lighter in tone, but I didn't really, I wasn't really successful in that. I need to work on um, values more, you know, I need more practice with that, defining values, because um, I wanted the body to be sort of dark and the, the snout and the paws and the forearms to be uh, a lighter tone, a bit like a, like a Doberman, I guess, that sort of coloration. But yeah, it wasn't entirely successful, as you'll see. Yeah, just 
filling in the creases there in between its its toes. And here I think I'm like, mm. this is quite, yeah, it's quite light on, at the poor end. Um, so I'm just trying to darken up as the leg gets nearer to the body. I'm realizing it needs to be a lot darker. Um, but still trying to keep a bit of the, it's not very noticeable, but trying to keep a bit of a sort of rim lighting. Um, another thing I need to work on is, yeah, like more complex lighting models, you know, uh, a nice rim light on stuff. I'm happy with how the, the nose cone of the propeller turned out um, as far as giving a sort of chrome effect. But it was a bit harder to uh, render the actual blade to the propeller. <clears throat> Not sure I'm, I was successful there. But I think I will take this um, black and white sketch into Procreate on my iPad um, and colour it digitally. And there I'll get a chance to uh, add more tonality, you know, define the tone, the tonal areas of the sketch better. The colour will give more information. nails of the uh, front paw there. People have said to me before, you know, this stippling technique is, seems very slow. Um, I guess it's sort of like, if there's light areas, it's faster than you think. Um, it's just the dark areas and the shadows that take a lot longer to slow you down. But if you need to represent a light area of the page, um, it's pretty quick. And I guess any other technique like cross hatching um, would be this, would be the same. Yeah, at this point, just working out how dark I want to get the upper four, upper forearm, upper forearm, upper arm of the four leg, <laughs> uh, four legged creatures. Uh, hard to know how to label the, the, the four limbs. to the back paws. And I think here I realise this is going to be a very dark bit. Yeah, big overhang. That should be enough. That should be very, very dark. Um, I haven't realised it yet though.
more work around the toes. Classical sort of spherical shape that should be relatively easy to render. Always trying to remember to um, you know, break down organic shapes into their sort of basic forms to work out where the light's hitting it, where the light's bouncing back up into it. Um, Yeah, I've swapped over to the 0.3 millimeter pen just to get some dark tones in there. So this is where it's going to slow down, I guess. <laughs> really getting the black into the sort of crease of the leg and the body. But again, just underneath the body, trying to retain a hint of the sliver of the bounce light as if the some of the light is hitting the ground and back up into the the underside of a body. Okay. Starting to render the back thigh. Again, like leaving a blank area at the very bottom of the form just to uh, depict light bouncing off the paws, back into the knee area. And temporarily turning from a stippling effect to uh, just a more of a scribbling effect, it sort of covers it covers up an, an area faster um, if the area is meant to be sort of middle middle to dark tone. It's a quicker way of covering up the paper. But then as it light as the form needs to be lighter, um, revert back to stippling here. darken it around the sides as if the light's not managing to wrap around as much there. And then now diminishing the, the brightness of the sort of knee area. Knowing that I'm going to dark the upper thigh a bit more. Yeah, hopefully I'm just trying to depict a bit of um, I know it's with my own dogs um, there's there's a slight crease above the knee where the knee is just trying to denote that with the lighter area the lighter patch in that area darkening that side because not much light's going to wrap around that that bit according to my internal calculations okay here I've realized we need we need to go a lot darker here yeah, 
bring back the uh, 0 0.3 millimeter pen. Apologies, this is the point one pen, yeah. Again, more scribbling as opposed to um, stippling. I think after many years of doing this, I can sort of, in a, in a matter of, yeah, in a sort of gradiated way, I can go from scribbling to plotting dots with a stippling method. glancing off this bit so it's going to be darker coming round to the wing this is going to be quite a bright area relative to the rest of the creature. Why did I come up with this in the first place, this idea, the sort of griffin creature with a propeller for a nose? Um, I think it was um, Listening to uh, listening to the news too much last year, um, uh, with all the sort of Brexit discussion, um, you know the UK's out of been out of Europe for three years now, and it was it. I did start this sketch as a bit of um, something like uh, a right wing Brexiteer would have as a tattoo, um, you know, sort of. Uh, a very patriotic sort of St. George dragon type creature but with a spitfire uh, propeller for a nose. I thought that would be uh, just, a, just a sort of symbol of like over patriotism, um, nationalism I guess, yeah. Yeah obviously for the record I wanted to remain in the EU. Um, here we are. Okay, I've moved on to the wings here. Um, trying to keep the shading quite flat, relatively flat. calculating that the the light would just hit that point a bit more but it's still a glancing angle just would like to point out if you're getting anything of uh, any value out of this so far yeah, please consider hitting the like button um, I'm new to this YouTube stuff, um, but yeah, I definitely want to start creating more content, uh, more valuable content, you know, more tutorial sort of based stuff. Okay, I've, I've, I avoid rendering doing any rendering in the sort of wing membrane area because I know if I do digitally color that um, it'll be very translucent um, as it's like the light will be shining through that surface so I don't want to add any stippling to that um, I just want it to be more or less uh, luminescent flat color um, really and 
when I get to the uh, digital colouring process. Yeah, just adding a bit of shadow at the bottom of the spars of the wing there. This wing is facing away from the light more. Uh, making that a bit darker. Yeah, I'm thinking there's gonna be a bit more shadow in this area. The wing's gonna uh, stop light reaching that area in a, in a small way. Just darkening this whole body, lower body area, generally. I'm thinking, I've, at this point I've remembered I want the body to be darker in tone than the extremities of the, uh, the limbs and the snout. Just trying to keep that sort of crease of skin there. Um, what I like about a stippling technique is you do get a lot of happy accidents where the dots will line up. Um, and at first you feel like, ah, oh, it's really obvious that these dots are in a line. But if you just add more dots to it, you sort of get this sort of skin creasing detail. Um, I sort of make use of a lot of happy accidents because um, the alternative is just leaving the accident there. <laughs> okay, on to the tail. Classic cylindrical rendering. You know, if you can render a cylinder, you can render a tail. Got the bounce light coming back off the floor at the bottom. This dark area that I'm doing, it's more like the horizon, like you'd see on a 1970s van airbrush painting. And then, uh, yeah, just now making the tail less shiny and just roughing it up a bit now. Yeah. Trying to get delicate on this bit. Um, yeah, it's weird. The small parts of a drawing, they're, they're very easy to overcook. Um, and be an ink, you can't, you can't really go backwards. It's very hard to correct. And he, if there's too much shading, it's very hard to correct. And again, you just go into the mode of, oh, I always intended it to be that dark. <laughs> Throwing the signature down, that's very important. Um, make sure there's room for that. <laughs> Some drawings I've, I've added the signature very, very early on in the process. Um, just because I don't want the hassle later on of uh, sort of fitting it in or and also I want to make it add to the composition not really take away from the composition and make it look jarring like the placement of the signature and yeah actually yeah just it just occurred to me this was my first ink drawing of 2023 yeah. this is some great YouTube footage you know the the hand obscuring everything. I will be trying to get a proper sort of overhead tripod set up so I can film drawings like more or less flat on. Yeah, just 
just adding shadow to ground the creature onto the rest of the paper. Yeah, I decided to darken up this uh, forearm. Hopefully the contrast of the pores to the forearms will uh, give the effect I want, you know, the lighter extremities. I like a lot of contrast in my um, drawings. I marvel at other artists that can do a whole drawing in uh, a very sort of narrow level of greyness. Um, something I struggle to do. My brain always wants to have a bright white highlight and a very dark shadow. Just something else I need to work on. Trying to give that toe the sort of rim lighting effect, as if there's a bit of a bright light coming from the side. More, yeah, more bounce light on the top of the toe. Yeah, I think at this point I'm like, the sort of back two limbs are sort of competing with the front two limbs, so it's like, okay, like really darken that up. So there's contrast between the back left leg and the front right arm leg. Adding to the shadow. But more, yeah, always try and add a contact shadow where the creature is standing. More great YouTube footage. Um, out of focus close up of uh, of a hand. Okay, we're good. We're back. Filling in the rest of this shadow because it needs to be darker there. The direction of the light means that the creature is going to obscure more of that background. And a matching bit of shadow. There we go, all done. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you uh, got anything out of this. Thanks a lot.